Okay. Um, No, or continue to learn some of I have a uh. All the participants, greetings you, Mr. Bogger. Okay. Uh, I I have a um a thing from Mr. Jaya. Yeah, that's the chat box. Yes, you can see there. So you can you can receive uh questions, commands, uh, uh, -huh. while, uh we are, while we are conducting the uh talk and uh uh, no worries, because I also will be monitoring that as well. Okay, okay. Well, I've 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 been welcomed by uh, Mr. Jayaraman. Jayaraman. Yes. Mr. Rasain Tiran. Yep. And Mr. Selwara. Selwara. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so do uh, they write these messages? Uh, how do you write? A oh, I see to everyone. Yeah, I yeah. I see. I see. So you you can really you can type something like like I'm doing. Yes, I will. <laughs> so excited. Okay. <laughs> You're pretty amazed with this technology. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty amazed with technology as well. He's too cute. First, first. Oh. Um, right. <clears throat> uh, of course, I've, I've, I've misspelled something. <laughs> Okay. Mani, Ruben, Ruben, Okay, okay. Our Robin, na la Nagin kunjo monitor banana. So, like, yar our Nagin, na ande ninge ida apno admin the cost ayirin. Yar our worth na ungla. Na ada kanya patagan ni bojo. Ah, okay, alright. To arun chilla ma. Okay, alright. Okay. Um, ane mo rekom na kam. Um, hindi ko ande moli ande. Audience are bang, so now that I'm legal chain at the So, on your go on a come, intrigue on the session learn from Yellow the Boyel Varma, and I'm good at Torrento and the Anivercom, Mikan and Tree. Okay, intrigue on the Namoda Energy and the Nasana Marta Redorman of Solid Ground, Dr. Bogget, Dr. Bogget of the Nagel Chiki, Varavai Kro. So, in the Nagel Chuan, Dr. Bogget, of course, Angulatana Peace Vare. English on the Angular Nartuvo. Um Pudi uh Yaraud um Nigenda Moli Lerman Kelvi Kekla and Nigga Kelly Granat and then Kayorti in a Kelly Kekla and then the Ongartal and then the uh race hand on the option to go. And then I'm getting a Kelly Kekla. Um either the Urkalando Readalarko and Aganala. Uh, Dr. Bogger, when they were very speech, could that the Capron number Kelly at Ramarilla, 
அவர் 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 சொல்லிக்கிட்டு இருக்கும் போதே நம்ம உங்களுக்கு கேள்வி வந்து அவர் கேள்வி கேட்கலாம் அப்புறம் நம்ம அந்த கேள்வியை அவருக்கு வந்து கொடுப்போம் அவர் தமிழ்ல அவர் ஆங்கிலத்தில் சொல்லும் போது அப்புறம் உங்களுக்கு புரியலன்னா நம்ம தமிழ்லையும் அதை வந்து மொழி மொழிபெயர்ப்பு மொழிபெயர்ப்பு செய்யலாம் உங்களுக்கு தேவைப்பட்டா நீங்கள் செய்யலாம் இல்லைன்னா தேவைப்படாட்டினா பரவாயில்ல ஸோ இன்றைக்கு வந்து கொஞ்சம் சிக்கலான ஒரு சுச்சுவேஷன் தான் ஏன்னா அவர் ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசுவார் நம்மளாம் கொஞ்சம் தமிழில் பேசுவோம் அப்படின்னு தெரில ஆனால் இருந்தாலும் இப்போ எப்படி அந்த நிகழ்ச்சி எப்படி நடக்குது நம்ம பார்ப்போம் எப்படி ஓகே ஸோ லெட் மீ வெல்கம் டாக்டர் பாகேட் டாக்டர் பாகேட் uh welcome sir to the group and uh, we are we are being uh, we are blessed and uh, we are we are you know um uh fortune to to have you uh, as part as a guest speaker for this for this session uh, which which have we have started 7 weeks ago and uh, i like to i like to uh, thank uh, dr bogat um especially when i when i when i when i invited him he said same i don't have any experience with this zoom thing so historically today historically this is the first time dr bogat is is going to do a presentation via zoom okay so that's that's one historical thing okay? and then uh, <laughs> and i i troubled him so much i pushed him so much he he has to order a a, a, a camera camcorder <laughs> and get it fixed uh, over his uh, desktop so thank you very much sir for that that you went extra mile there you know uh, you bought this and thank you very much for for your commitment to to be with us in this session sir so uh, uh, you have um, i mean um, most of us here uh, know no no you well right so i i would not like to do a uh, you know a big presentation on me, your work and we all know that you have done a uh, few international paper on on the ramushas right so uh, how are you sir very well sam thank you uh, very apprehensive of my first zoom meeting <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so so doctor uh, how are you keeping up with this pandemic how how situation in changrai anyway uh, for 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 the, for the information dr bogat is in thailand and from changrai uh, so how situation then in changrai sir well it's not very good sam just as it isn't in where you are it's much the same here okay right so so um let's up uh, earlier i have sent you some of the questions that raised by the viewers yes the uh, death railway uh, sh shall we go straight to the questions yes yes go go right ahead uh, go right ahead yeah yeah so the first question is um with regards to your work uh on the rumushas what actually it it's like you spend most of your it's a lifetime work that you have you have you have you have done you have you have contributed most of your time you know to this research on rumushas and death railway what actually made you do that uh well a combination of, of circumstances uh, but first may i uh, say to everyone thank you very much for joining us i i, I it's a great honor uh, that so many uh, people are interested in hearing what we have to say and thank you to some for your words of welcome and i'm pretty sure from looking at the list that i know some of the people who are attending anyway uh thank you for putting up with me again and i'm very happy to be here um to go back to your question uh it's really rather simple it happened more or less by accident what happened was i was in thailand hello what yeah. happened the, the the is that okay yeah it's okay yeah yeah oh it it's just changing the, the changed, uh, yeah you, we have this option of have it changing the you, you can stop the live video oh okay <laughs> I, i i i well i i yes i'm terribly sorry 
uh, I have 35 participants here. Yes, yes. Good Lord. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Uh, the uh, first question was, how did I get involved in this terrible problem of the uh, Asian Romsha on the Death Railway? Um, I happened to be on sabbatical leave from my Japanese university in Bangkok. I can't remember the year, but the first time that Asian laborers' bones were excavated in a either a sugarcane field or a rice field uh, in Kanchanaburi, not far from the provincial office, I seem to remember. Uh, and I, I, I was a very ordinary person. Uh, I didn't know much about the Death Railway. Uh, it was more or less confined to images from the bridge on the River Kwai and movies like that. And it was just all I, I remember that I presumed it was all about Western prisoners of war. So when the Thai uh, press were making uh, this fuss, about Asian laborers' bones being discovered in Kanchanaburi, I was quite shocked. I didn't know that any Asians were involved. You will forgive me for saying that, but that I think that that would be uh, true of most young people, even of my generation uh, in the West. We didn't have much knowledge about the railway. And because of this, I uh, went out of my way to visit the area uh, and find out a little bit more about these bones. I was working at the time uh, in uh, my Japanese university, Kyoto Seika University, and they had sent me to, uh, on sabbatical leave, to Thailand to learn Thai and to um, uh, help with the research of Chulalongkorn University's Social Research Institute. And that was the situation. I can't remember the year. It's not quite a lifetime's work. Uh, I think it might have been as recently as 1970 that these bones, the first discovery of these bones. Anyway, I went to South, uh, to Kanchanaburi and I, I was just amazed, you know, here was this stupid Western boy thinking that it was all about British and Australian soldiers. And, 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 and I, I, I was confronted with the uh, very uh, real evidence of an enormous number uh, uh, of uh, Asian bodies and bones being excavated from a rice field in Kanchanaburi. The bones had been removed by the time I got there, so I wasn't really able to do uh, investigate very much. I believe they were removed to a Chinese temple in Pattaya, near to Pattaya, which is perhaps well known to you. Uh, as, you mean Pattaya? Pattaya. Pattaya, yes. Pattaya. Pattaya. Pa pa Pattaya. Pattaya. So from Kanchanapuri moved to Pattaya. I'm not quite sure how this happened, but that I understand is where they are today. Oh, so okay. they'd already been moved, they'd already been cleared mm -hmm. uh, by the time I got there. Though I think I got there very soon after the reports came out. Mm -hmm. um, and DNA testing had already been done by, I don't know, I guess the Thai government and that they were Asian DNA bones. That's mm -hmm. all I remember. So I, th th that was my beginning. Who are these Asian, who are the bones of these Asians uh, uh, on the Death Railway? What was all this about? I had no idea about it. Right. And then I started to uh, read a little bit more about the actual situation. Uh, 
on the death railway. And I was quite horrified. I mean, even by the Western government's admissions, which uh, uh, I, must, I, I will explain later, which are very minimized, uh, there were 200 and supposed to be 270,000 uh, Asian laborers involved on the railway but only about 60,000 prisoners of war. Mm. And that just seemed very strange to me. What was going on here? Why was the history being written in this way? What really happened on the railway? And that was the beginning of, of, of my interest. Um, my university was sending uh, about 20 students a year on a, a long-term study program uh, with Chiang Mai University in Thailand. So there were these 20 students or so from my university actually studying in Thailand. And when the, the Thai program had finished, I, I started to uh, suggest that perhaps we should look at this death railway. And uh, so for every year, uh, thereafter, I think for about seven or eight years, I um, took a, a, pro, a, a group of Jap young Japanese students uh, to Kanchanaburi and to the Death Railway, the Hellfire Pass and all these terrible places, uh, to include that in their studies of Thailand. And that's how it all began. And that enabled me to be on the area of the railway and to meet with other people involved in research and to learn more myself and I started making the reports on the Asian laborers as, as, as I uh, found them. Mm. Right. So so that's really the story. <laughs> So, so you are referring to the excavation. Uh, I mean, they found this uh, a grave yard with bones, and is that a bangle with, with the bones? They found a bangle. Yes, yes. I remember seeing that 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 photo during one of the presentations. Is that, is that one? Yes. Let me see if I have, can get that photo up for us. Just a minute. Yes, it was that. That, uh, that was the, pla the place I was talking about. I have this somewhere. Okay. Not that one. Just a minute. Give me a few seconds. Sure, sure, sir. I'm sure it will come. It should be very near. I don't think I have a close-up, but this is the, can you see the photo? Yes, yes. Is uh, that clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a bangle actually on the leg of uh, this person. Okay. Uh, but I didn't sort of focus on that for what I was doing. Yes. Right. Um, so, and, and when I went to Kanchanabri, these were... This is a strange story. You know, Thailand is a land of ghosts and spirits. Okay. <laughs> most of which are evil. Um, the owner of the rice field or the sugarcane field, I'm, I'm not quite sure which. Some, some accounts said it was a sugarcane field. Some said it was a rice field. Sugarcane is a, a very common product in the Kanchanaburi area. Okay, and they um, uh, the first excavation, which was the one that I attended, many excavations were done in the same place subsequently, but uh, the first excavation, many of the people, elderly people who w were still alive, who remembered what had happened there, um, and they told us 
that it had been a burial ground or a burial pit for an uh, a hospital for the Asian laborers. And they also told us that some of them were still alive when they were put in the pit. Yes. That I do you mean, remember. You mean some of them are not dead when, when they yes. were buried? Yes, some of them were not, were not dead. Oh, yes, yes. We, we see that, I mean, from the reports from the POWs, we, we see that as well. It has been stated that we, you know, most of them are not, some of them are not uh, dead when they were buried. So buried yes. alive. Yes. yes, but apparently this was happening in a hospital, uh, 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 which was, you know, a, a fairly mainline uh, hospital. I'm just going to turn my volume up. Yeah. Okay, I think I've done it. I'm back with you again. Oh, okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, oh good, good, that's better. Okay. I think it's working properly now. Right. Um, uh, so that, that was how I became involved. And as I was able to take Japanese students there every year, Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, able to write reports. Mm. And that's how it. And and and, um, <clears throat> and uh, just to just to check with you, we we don't see uh, uh, you know other scholars or, or historians. Uh, of course, they have written a lot on the POWs, but not on the Romushas. Uh, and uh, again, that, that we see uh, the, the work on Ramushas is just is, is just done by yourself. Uh, is that true, or you you have? Well, no, no, not really. I think there are other people who are very concerned about the history of the Romsha too. I mean, Doctor Paul Kratoska uh, is one who wrote that, uh, who compiled that series of documents about the railway, which I, I would recommend everybody to have access to, but it's so expensive. <laughs> you would have to get it from a library. Uh, I was fortunate that you uh, uh, sent me a, a, a lot of copies of this. Oh, um, the, the, those were just, you know, uh, a part of his work uh, on that railway. Yeah. The, 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 as I as I mentioned to the viewers, you know, uh, earlier, seven vol six volumes, huge volumes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, right. So, going back to the second questions about the Japanese, uh, you knowing the Japanese, uh, you know, like uh, rich in this Eastern culture, respect, and all this. Uh, um, um, uh, you know, the respect to humanity, all these things that we learn from the Japanese. Uh, isn't that something that, that it, something uh, shocking to you in, in one sense, you're not able to digest the atrocities that you saw in, in the, committed by the Japanese along the death railway, along on the death railway. How, how do you see that? Well, uh... I think you have to remember uh, that the Japanese were thoroughly brainwashed by militarism in that period. They're not the same as the people that we know today. Mm. Um, and I think that we have to say that. We have to understand that. A lot of people, a lot of Japanese behaved in ways that 
a Japanese would not normally behave because of the military indoctrination uh, that was part of their, well, a very important fundamental part of the education system. Mm. It was all, everything was controlled by the military in those days. And it's a very, I mean, it, it's, I, I remember somebody asking me, well, so what? Thailand's a military government. Uh, what, what, what's so different about Japan? I would say that the big difference is that, Thailand, it's that unlike Thailand, mm -hmm. Japan is ruthlessly efficient. Mm -hmm. The Germans and the Japanese seem to be the most uh, very efficient people. Um, and uh, the Japanese, uh, certainly the uh, militarism in Japan uh, was the order of the day. You couldn't possibly get through school without uh, a military indoctrination at a very fundamental level. Uh, uh, and so it's important to realize this was not the, Japan, the, the Japan that we know today. It was even, you may know that uh, Japan participated in two big wars before the Second World War. The first was the Russo-Japanese War, and the second was the First World War, where they were fighting on the Allied side, mm. uh, and they took the German colony of Shinkai. In both the Russo-Japanese War in 1904 and 1905 and the First World War, they had Russian uh, and uh, in the First World War, German prisoners of war in Japan. And they were treated very well, mm -hmm. usually on the island of Shikoku. So something very, uh, something has changed very fundamental between the 1914 war and the 1939 or 1941 war. I guess it started for you guys in 1941. Yes. Uh, in, in the West, it's usually 1939. Um, those intervening years are when the, ja the Japanese military moved to control all aspects of Japanese society. Uh, and it was quite unthinkable that you could have any future if you tried to criticize this military. Mm. That we, we have seen that uh, records of, you know, how the ultra-nationalist uh, took over the, the army and the navy uh, and to the point that they gunned down four prime ministers, uh, Japan, who yes. who uh, who did not align to their thoughts, especially yes. The, yes. Uh, being very liberal and democratic over issues uh, pertaining to Japan. So most probably you will be gunned down. Uh, so we have seen that, right? So, uh, yeah, so, so uh, uh, to the audience, uh, we have Dr. Boggett with us and uh, uh, please, um, uh, please uh, send your, you can post your questions here in the chat box. Um, okay, we have a question here. Okay, is there any action taken by the Malayan government to bring back those laborers to Malaya? Strangely, there is, um, uh, 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 to respond to that question, thank you for asking it. Mm -hmm. I have not seen the report concerned. Uh, when I visited the Imperial War Museum in London, uh, the report was a way for digitization, so I was, wasn't able to see it. Uh, but the uh, planters, the plantation owners, who I guess were mostly British, mm. had organized, or at least a group of plantation owners, organized a relief committee and actually went to Kanchanapuri 
themselves to try and find out where their Malayan workers had gone. Most of these would, because they were from plantations, were of course Indian uh, laborers, and as you know, mostly Tamil, but not all. There were other uh, members of the Indian community in Malaya involved also. And they did repatriate a, a, quite a lot. There was also repatriation uh, uh, program carried out by both the Dutch government for Indonesians and uh, the British government uh, for Malayan, Singaporeans and Burmans, Burmese. Uh, but uh, the problem with this was that it was done, you know, it, it, with a military frame of mind. You stuck up a notice in a marketplace if you're a laborer, report. <coughs> but of course, many people, many laborers never saw the notice. Mm. They, never, they never reported because they'd never seen the notice. And uh, that happened time and time again. Uh, I, I heard uh, all the, the only laborers that I met who still were left in Thailand, all of them uh, reports by, by uh, them of others uh, stressed that they never heard of any of the repatriation issues. Mm. You see, unlike the prisoners of war, who were kept in camps, the, the, the Asian laborers were strung out. Of course, they were in camps too, but they were strung out right along the rail. It was, uh, and that was what, 400 kilometers? Yeah, 400, 450 kilometers, yes. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was only by chance that they would see or hear of the attempts at repatriation. Of course, those who, those who did see the notice uh, would report and would get repatriated. But uh, a later Indian reporter from India uh, who reported on the, uh, especially Tamil laborers, um, claimed that the price of the, uh, they were charged for the ships, uh, for the passage by ship back to Malaya was uh, uh, very expensive uh, given the going rates at the time. Mm. So th that actually prevented the, the I think. Uh, from coming back to Malaya. And uh, you have- living people and, and there's these uh, dead people were also repatriated. Oh. And this is something that is not uh, widely known in Malaya. Sorry, in Malaysia, I must get my terminology correct. Uh, the, when I was uh, in KL uh, a long, long time ago, the first time I gave a speech there, I was approached by some people from Taiping who told me about uh, the repatriation of dead bodies from uh, uh, the Siam Burma Railway uh, to the port of, of Taiping. The, I, I can't remember what it was called. It's where the, where the railway that was taken away ended. You mm -hmm. know, the British built a railway. Yeah, to port, port well. Port well, yes. Port, that port, thank you, Port Weld. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, uh, uh, th thank you very much indeed, uh, um, uh, Mr. Nair. That's, that's, that, that, that. I have not yet been there. I've been to Taiping, but I didn't know about the railway, <coughs> which had been taken away anyway by the Japanese. And I didn't know at that time uh, uh, where to look for the cemetery, but the bodies were brought back to Port Weld. They were laid out according to 
the uh, racial groups of Malaya at the time, Indians, Malays, uh, uh, and um, uh, India, uh, um, Chinese. Chinese, sorry. And uh, they, the British authorities then asked the relic, anybody who had not been on the rail, uh, who had lost people, working on the railway to please come to Port Well and see if they could identify any of the bodies. I think it would have been very difficult, <coughs> excuse me, to identify any of them because of the state they were in. Um, but uh, that process was carried out and I was told by a minister from Port Weld, uh, who I'd met at the meeting, that the, there were three graveyards constructed in one of the cemeteries, one for the Malays, one for the Indians, and one for the Chinese. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can hear you. Go you ahead. can hear me. Yeah, yeah, uh, everyone can hear. Uh, did, uh, have you heard all the... Yes, yes, everything. Uh, so anyway, there were some... The, answer, the, the brief answer to the question is that there were some efforts to repatriate the laborers and even dead bodies. Uh, to uh, Malaya. Uh, whether they were very thorough attempts or not is a different matter. Mm. So it's it's uh, what you are telling me is quite uh, new for us because we yet to come uh, uh, to know any uh, you know any uh, you know bodies were were transported from uh, uh, from the death railway to uh, Taiping, uh, so that's that's quite new. That's that's for yeah. Well, I want I would like to be able, but I'm getting old, you know. I'm getting old too. Uh, I I have lost the con the, the the contacts of the minister in Port Weld who told me about this. Uh, he also told me that the graveyard has changed because a Muslim mosque had been built over it or something like that. But the the Chinese and the Indian sections are still there. Mm. And, and, and um, I'm assuming this will be this 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 was a mass graveyard where they put all well I suppose so. I don't know if they had individual uh, yeah. partitions or not. I don't know. Okay. So that's because I haven't been there. I, I must find out about this. All right, that's new. Maybe uh, listeners from Taiping can, you know, look into this, and uh, maybe they can. This was my problem when I went to Taiping. Taiping people don't know anything about Port Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're talking about a different, a, a different world. Perhaps somebody could. Uh, 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 there, there, there's there's, uh, there, there's more questions come, coming. Okay, up. more questions coming in, and then we just saw one. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. It's, okay. Um, it's okay. Let me check on uh, this. Other questions. I think there are some questions which I'll uh, uh, interrupt. I, we, we should go back to your uh, your yeah, questions yeah, right. later. But, but yeah. um, uh, the uh, people are asking me about the compensation. Yes. Uh, the legal situation, as the Japanese embassy uh, are always quick to point out, is that under the San Francisco Peace Treaty, mm -hmm. uh, the Allied governments, now 
whether Malaya or Malaysia, as it later became, was included in that uh, term is legally a matter of, uh, of dispute, I think. But um, the Allied governments agreed to drop all claims of compensation uh, to the Japanese government for the war. So uh, prisoners of war who were involved in the railway could not claim compensation from Japan. They claimed it, in, they were given instead compensation by the British government. And I think, as you mentioned, Sam, the last payout was, I think, £20,000 uh, per family by the Tony Blair government. Yes, and it was done by the government. Uh... Now, the problem is, what legally do we construe as the allied governments, because it's very obvious that Malaya was not uh, represented at the San Francisco Peace Treaty, but Britain was. Yes. Now, I think that it will be of great interest, and I, I want to find out more about this, but I have not been able to. The another country's colony, um, the Philippines, a colony of America, the American government, I was told, paid compensation to Filipinos who had suffered uh, loss of life or illness or whatever during the Japanese occupation. I don't think that the sum was very large perhaps $100 per claimant or something like that. But I have not been able to verify whether this, to what extent this happened, how thorough it was, uh, and so on. But if that is true, this, the, this is the only colony of a Western power that actually re received compensation from the colonial government, America, after the war. Um, and in a, a certain sense, that might be a precedent. Oh, yeah. And so I think that <clears throat> my suggestions over this is, uh, and, and, and I could go on forever and ever on compensation, but, but it's not necessary. The people who want to, uh, who are thinking of the compensation issue I think you have to investigate, try to find an instance where other colonial subjects of a different empire were actually compensated by their imperial government, because that would be a precedent. Mm. And, and um, you know, you know there's this documents by Dr. Uh, Kratoska uh, on on the uh, on the response from the Indian government in, in uh, with regards to compensation. Um, it was it was always uh, considered that we uh, I mean the 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 Indians uh, laborer was part of the Indian uh, uh, India part of India, so they are Indians. So uh, it might be a little bit difficult be because in in Philippines they they do not have migrants there. But in Malaya, well, that is true. But that 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 doesn't alter the that doesn't change the situation for the the victims in Malaya. Yeah. I mean, whether they are considered part of India or whether they are considered part of Malaya is hardly a, a matter of much import to them. Mm. What they are concerned with is, are they getting, were they, were, were they or are they likely to get any compensation? Okay. So I think that a lot of tautologies have been employed by various governments 
Uh, um, this will come up with your Korean Gunzok question later. Um, <coughs> but the allied governments, perhaps with the exception of America, as I've just outlined, were not interested in compensating their colonial subjects. Mm. And that is something that, so when we're talking about com compensation, it's if the Japanese embassy officials are legally correct in saying that claims of compensation were all settled at the San Francisco Peace Treaty, then we should be claiming compensation from England. Okay. All right. I mean, as far as the, uh, the victim is concerned, he doesn't really care whether it comes from England or whether it comes from, 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 from Japan. What he wants to hear is that somebody acknowledges his suffering. I mean, I think that's the important thing. Um, we have another question here in, with regards to the uh, the current Japanese generation who are in denial. Oh well, we, 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 this is a big. This is why I was taking students to the railway uh, mm -hmm. every year uh, was for precisely this reason. When they actually visited all these museums and these sites, and they heard from people there then of course they were very shocked because they're not told anything about it at all. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the questioner is correct. The Japanese uh, uh, younger generation generally are in a sense of denial unless they happen to come from a, a university that was fortunate enough, uh, like my own, and there were others uh, to have uh, instruction on what happened in the war. There are others. Uh, I know that Keisen University, a Christian university in Tokyo, also is very big on this. Okay. Um, uh, then uh, uh, Mr. Vijay uh, has mentioned legal suit against the British. Well, yes, I, I, I don't know. Uh, this is why I say it's important to establish whether the Americans did pay compensation to those who suffered in the uh, Japanese occupation of the Philippines. It is important to find a precedent so that you can say, we, that you can say in court, well, look here, this is what the Americans gave the Filipinos. And we don't want to hear about whether you thought we were part of India or whether we were part of Malaya. These people went from what was then Malaya and they need compensation. And if you gave away our rights to compensation, then like the Americans in the Philippines, you should be compensating us. I agree with you. Uh, I, I, I think, but I, I do think that it is necessary to find out if this Philippine precedent, how it actually worked uh, in order to uh, take out any action against the, the to, 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 to make any claim against the British. Well, okay, right. So we have, uh, yeah, I think we have answered most of the questions here. And uh, I left one question that was raised by, uh, I just rem remember reading these questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, were the laborers aware that they were, they were being taken to Kanchanaburi to build the railway road? I don't think they were made aware of anything very much. Uh, it depends on the way that they were recruited. I mean, some were simply rounded up. M Malays. Um, <coughs> I met a Malayan <coughs> laborer uh, who was still in, in, in Thailand uh, many oh. years ago. I, I took my students to visit with him. Um, you may have seen photos of him in the 
in in my uh, presentations mm. um, uh, uh, he was rounded up after a movie i think and there are various stories these people would not know where on earth they were going because nobody would have told them but uh, when the Japanese recruited labor through, for example, plantation overseers, uh, which they did, I believe, I can't remember what the, uh, the plantation overseer is called in, in, in Malay or in Indian. Uh, Mandor. Uh, but uh, uh, those people would know what, what, why they were going. Yeah. Because they would, uh, they were probably even. It was even suggested that perhaps it would help the independence of India. Mm. So yes, uh, to a certain extent, people from the plantations probably knew what they were going to, but the others did. Uh, because they couldn't speak any of the languages anyway. They're not like us, you know. Uh, uh, most of us can manage English language. Uh, mm. Most of the workers who were sent uh, to the railway uh, could speak nothing except their own native language. They certainly couldn't speak Japanese or Korean. Um, and most of them would not be able to speak English. Right. So that's that's bring me to 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 another questions of you know you have we have you have worked with uh, Rod BT, uh -huh. who was taking care of the Siam Burma Railway Museum. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, we have seen this, some of his videos that he explored the whole you know the the the, the route the death railway the uh, I think from I think he has been to Thumb from Tambuzay he has routed that whole uh, you know uh, 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 the whole uh, route from Tambuzaya to uh, uh, Banpong. Um, this this question here is that. Will, will we be able to identify any mass graves along the route? Oh, you he have, he have mentioned that I, too. I haven't, I haven't really looked into that. Uh, there must have been some mass graves identified, mm -hmm. uh, though not by Rod Beatty, it would have been before. It would have been before we were involved. Um, it would have been in the immediate post-war period uh, when the railway was still working and was being used by the British, they claimed, to round up the, the, the workers and, and people involved who'd been involved in the construction. Um, I don't know if that was true or not, but the railway was still working in 1945. And um, that would have been the time when mass, any mass graves would have, could have been identified. Uh, many graves of Western prisons were of course identified from that process. But I don't think I don't recall any Asian laborers mass graves being recorded. Do you recall? Do you recall any being mentioned by in in uh, Dr. Kratoska's works? Uh, not by Dr. Kratoska, but uh, uh, I remember seeing a video on Rod Beatty uh, that he claimed that he has seen. Uh, mass graves of uh, Rumushas along the railway. But unfortunately, is he, is he still employed? Uh, uh, with the... I don't know. I uh, don't know what the situation is there. Mm. Um, well, if he had identified a mass grave of Asian workers, why the hell wasn't it excavated? 
I mean, I think that uh, anybody who had relatives who disappeared on the, the death railway would want to ask that question. Yeah. So maybe much of it was talk. I don't know. Mm. I mean, certainly if I'd lost my father or my cousin or my uncle on the railway, I would want to know why, why these graves hadn't been uh, inspected. So, so talking with, 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 with regards to that, that excavation, is it possible for us, for, for us to, in Malaysia, you know, to, to do the excavation work, resume the bones and bodies? I mean, not the body, but the bones. Well, you'd have to identify, you have to identify where the grave was. And of course, you would have to have permission to operate on and within the the uh, territory yeah, of Thailand. But I, I I just don't know. Mm. That would would involve a lot of legality as well. Well, my impression is that this country is a very bureaucratic country, mm. and getting permission to do anything is a major. A major uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so um, uh, it is known the Indian uh, is more numerous than the other group. So, so the, the another question is why the Indians were deployed more than the other. Uh, uh, it is not actually true that the Indians were the largest group. Mm -hmm. uh, the largest group of laborers, we, we believe that there were about 100,000 Indians involved, uh, but there were 170,000 Burmese involved. That figure was given by a labor overseer, mm. uh, a Burmese labor overseer, who actually ran away from the railway in the end, but he later became a famous writer under in the days of Nevin. He's dead now. I can't possibly pronounce his his name. It's something like Lignoni Titluin, and he wrote a book in Burmese about his experiences on the railway, and uh, he states that 170,000 Burmese were rounded up in the first uh, sort of selection process uh, for the railway. Now, 170,000 probably includes Indians in Burma, although most of the Indians who could run away with the British uh, ran away to India. There were still a lot of Indian citizens left in Burma. And I imagine that some of the people included in this 170,000 were probably Indians. So this, so 170,000 also involved Indians, but but not able to. I see. don't know how many. I don't know what the most probably uh, they, were, they were deployed to yeah. to, open, uh, to build the 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 Burma session of the railway right yes right. yes and then they were you know they, they, it was not I I believe it is they were not forcefully uh, recruited because Burma was was having uh, the, the same impression of liberating Burma just like how uh, Subhash Chandra Bose had the INA had impression of India so that would be a more a volunteer kind of uh, uh, recruit. No, okay. no, they were rounded up very forcefully oh, as well. <laughs> yes, uh, it didn't matter about liberation. Uh, re 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 remember that uh, Indonesia was the worst country mm. of all the Japanese occupied territories. Uh, there were at least two point. There were at least five hundred thousand uh, Romsha involved. Uh, in in India itself, uh, in in Indonesia itself. Sorry, um, 
And Romsha, it's a Japanese word, is actually a word in Bahasa Indonesia. It was imported. It imported. Uh, yeah. By the uh, uh, Indonesians, because this was their experience. Mm. I even found, and uh, let, me, let me check where I put it. <clears throat> One historian has claimed that if all the Indonesians that who were actually involved in some way, like it may only have been for a few days, in forced labor, the Japanese roundup of labor in Indonesia affected 10 million people. Oh. So we are talking about figures that put the, the, Burma Rail, the, the Siam Burma Railway into a very small thing. Now, I think this 10 million is probably a bit of an exaggeration. Hmm. But um, other historians say that there was definitely 200,000 to 500,000 people who were rounded up full time as laborers in, in Indonesia. Um, so, the, the, the problem of, of Japanese labor, and this is what you might, we, to go back to the court, the possible compensation, this, uh, we are opening a can of maggots, as it were, and uh, it's never ending, the claims that could be made. Um, and it's important that we somehow uh, are able to address these grievances and I, I don't know quite how to do it now. I mean, Holland wouldn't be able to compensate all that number of people, even if it wanted to. So uh, we're, we're, we're talking about an enormous labor mobilization throughout the Japanese empire. And uh, we should... Uh, Uh, some more questions have come up that are related. Yeah, this. Uh, yes, uh, the question about Burmese. Yes, it is true. Oh, right. um, the Indian laborers from Malaya were the second largest group uh, after the Burmese. And it is true that as a lot of the line was in Burma, though most of it was in Thailand, uh, uh, it would be more convenient for the Japanese to round up peasants uh, from villages in Burma than to bring them from here. I, I don't know, I, I, but this labor mobilization problem honestly is never ending. I heard reports that some Malay people, whether they were M Malayan people, whether they were Indian or Chinese or Malay, I don't know, were actually sent to the Pekan, Pekan Baru Railway in Sumatra. Oh, uh, from, from Malaya? No, people from Malaysia, from oh. Malaya, were even sent uh, to, I don't think the number was very great, but we are talking about an enormously complicated uh, labor process. So, so do, do you do you um, came across any compensation claims from the Indonesians? I mean, the, the, any NGOs in, in, in non-governmental non organizations in Indonesia claiming for uh, or, or doing any effort or taking any effort to claim for compensation? Have you heard of that? No. I don't think I have. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, I wouldn't probably, because the pro as most of the the forced labor was uh, in Indonesia, I wouldn't know about it. I only know of the Indonesians, the Java, usually Javanese, who mm. were sent to the railway, and we think that that's about a hundred thousand people were act actually sent. From Java to uh, Burma uh, to to Thailand. Right. Okay. 
So uh, when when so so doctor, when we read about uh, books on on the POWs, they prefer to uh, to 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 refer the Indians as Tamils, um, and and we we find that most uh, um, in most of their books, you know, their biography. Uh, they have mentioned the, the word Tamil. So is, does that mean that they, they assume the Burmese also Tamils as well? Or, or was that the... the no, the, the Burmese were Burmese. Yeah. Uh, and so, presumably the, are the minorities, including Tamil. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was surprised. I was told it was a ta Tamil. I found a group of... of, of, of I mean, I couldn't talk to them because they couldn't talk Thai and they couldn't talk English. Uh, at Tampapum, which is almost at San, uh, Sanklaburi, mm. which is where they, the railway went across the border. Uh, yeah. uh, some, uh, I was told these were Tamil women who'd come from Burma. Mm. But I, I, I don't know because I, I wasn't able to investigate. Right. Uh, so we go to the the original question that we have uh, we have discussed earlier with regards to the um, there was a, there's a uh, with Gonzuku. Oh, Gunzoku, Gunzoku, Gonzoku. I I don't know what the origin of the. Uh, who originated this. This is about Koreans, for those of you who haven't heard the term. Uh, Koreans who were camp guards. Uh, and it's a very complicated story. And as usual, a very tragic one. The Koreans were, generally speaking, despised by Japanese. Uh, because their governments had uh, tried to appeal against the Japanese and this, that, and the other. So they were severely discriminated against uh, by the Japanese in the colony of Korea. And the Japanese came up with the idea of recruiting 3,000 young Koreans to act as guards along the railway camps. I think, uh, uh, how many did I say? Wait a minute, Koreans. There were 3,000 Koreans, uh, Korean youth, were trained for two months in Busan, that's in at the south end of South Korea, and sent to be guards on the railway. And so here you have a colonial people of the Japanese empire, again, being used uh, by the military, by the Japanese military, on the front line of prisoners of war camps. Now, all the Asian laborers that I have uh, come across um, or, or the accounts that I've read, talk of the brutality of these guards. The laborers were not quite sure where these gunzokers, they were called. It means military auxiliary in Japanese. A military auxiliary. Um, uh, they were not sure of the country of origin of these people, but it was very clear to them that they were not Japanese, uh, possibly a difference of language, possibly the way they were treated by the Japanese. Uh, but the accounts are of very br brutal treatment at the hands of these Koreans. Um, some prisoners thought that they were perhaps Taiwanese. There were Gunzok from Taiwan also, but not on the rail. 
uh, they were all Koreans on the Siam Burma Railway. Uh, Taiwanese Gunzaku had been used in camps, uh, prisoner of war camps in Indonesia, I think, and they had also been used as scouts for the Japanese army. They were not involved on the railway. And to put it quite bluntly, it was like the, the system worked this way. If the Koreans didn't beat up their prisoners, whether they were Asian or POWs, it didn't really matter. It was uh, irrelevant. If they didn't beat up these prisoners and treat them harshly, they were beaten up just as badly by the Japanese. Mm. And this is something that people don't realize. The uh, very uh, rigid uh, lines of discrimination that the Japanese had constructed within their own empire. Mm. So, so that's why the Koreans were brutal. If they didn't do, if they didn't hit the prisoners, they got hit themselves. Mm. And it's not really the Korean, the Koreans had no say in the running of any of the camps. Uh, the Koreans uh, were just the puppy dogs of the Japanese military machine, if you like. And so I think there, it brings in, it calls into question several things. <clears throat> After the war, because they, they, the, the Koreans were very widely detested, not just by the Asian laborers, but by the uh, Western POWs as well. Um, and many of them, as you know, were uh, charged with war crimes. Uh, in um, uh, in uh, Singapore, some of the BC class war criminals were actually Koreans, and so quite a number were executed. Um, and those who escaped execution were sent back to Japan. This was a country they didn't even know. And where they had lost Japanese citizenship anyway by the same San Francisco Treaty. Koreans were no longer citizens of Japan as they had been in the, in the days of empire. They were sent back to a country that they didn't even know as uh, repatriation. I think most of them would have been able to speak some Japanese because they would have been, that was why they, you know, that would have been part of their two months training in Busan would be to learn Japanese. So uh, we have some very strange contradictions when dealing with these Korean uh, guards. Uh, because of the accounts of, uh, of Western prisoners, particularly, uh, they were very harshly treated by the Allies. Um, and uh, the last one, the last surviving Korean Gunzoku died in Tokyo in March this year. Yes, and, uh, and he sued the government for the atrocity committed yes. to the Japanese army. I, I remember reading that, yes. Yes. The, the, e. Hackney was his name. Now, his case is very interesting because he was tried for war crimes in Singapore and found not guilty. But on his way back to Japan, he was rearrested in Hong Kong, charged again 
with the same war crime, the same crimes that he'd already been found innocent of, and a testimony of some of, of the chief witness, an Australian, didn't even sign the accusation sheet. He was condemned to death in Hong Kong. Mm. Or maybe he was sent back to Singapore. He wasn't killed and eventually was repatriated to Sugamo prison in Tokyo. Uh, there have been some very good programs. Uh, in Japan about the situation of Koreans. And the two I mentioned to you are a movie about the whole history of Korean, the use of Korean military auxiliaries on the railway and in other prison camps in Southeast Asia by a Japanese uh, student of the Tokyo Film Academy. And he, uh, uh, he produced a, a documentary of about two hours um, because he went on to talk about uh, the, the claims that uh, he and other guards, were former guards, had been making against the Japanese government. But it's a very good movie, and he has provided English subtitles. Because, of course, the language is uh, Korean and Japanese, which we're unlikely to hear anything about. The Koreans were never sent to Korea because, being a very unforgiving culture, Korean society uh, didn't want them. Uh, one of the Koreans who did actually later return to Korea found that his wife had committed suicide because she was the wife of a collaborator with the Japanese. Mm. Another Korean was the subject of a, a documentary by the NHK, the national broadcaster in Tokyo, in Japan, the Japanese national television, uh, a man called Cho Moon-san, who was executed in Singapore. Um, and uh, it's a very moving documentary uh, called The Last Testament of Cho Mun San. And it was, uh, but uh, unfortunately, it's only in Japanese. Mm. Uh, so these guards were, forced, were in many cases compelled to uh, treat the prisoners harshly. Otherwise, they, 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 their own future was, was uh, in question. And um, they were not able to return to Korea for obvious reasons, because they were war criminals, and they would not be accepted. And uh, many of them ended up in various tragic circumstances. And like the Korean, like the Asian laborers, like the India, the Tamils and everybody else, they were a colony. They weren't given too much option in this matter. And it's because I would suggest to you that Korea was a colony that the whole problem was never addressed by the Allied nations. Because if you started to argue about the Koreans being a colony of Japan and forced to do this and forced to do that, and the victims of discrimination, well, of course, people would ask you about your own colony. What were you doing about your own colony, about Malaya, about Burma? about uh, uh, Indonesia, uh, about Indochina. It's uh, the whole problem of colonized peoples was ignored. And that, again, is why I, I, I mentioned this American attempt to compensate the Filipinos. Um, 
somebody is talking about monuments. Yes. That, that had been brought up uh, last week about setting up a monument for the um, demise soul, uh, for the laborers that we know that we, there's, there's one in Kanchanaburi, uh, whereas in, in Malaysia, there's, there's two monuments have been set up, one in Penang and one in, uh, one in Ipoh. So, yeah, I've been to the, the Penang one. I, 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 I went to their service there. Yeah. Just a minute. I think there are some misunderstandings about what monuments, just a minute, let's see if I can get this. Uh, how do I do that? There is this monument. I'm just going to try to show you. Can you can you see this picture? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. This is a monument. Yeah. Uh, in Kanchanaburi, near the famous bridge. Uh, it's um. Uh, is my camera okay again? I'm yes. Yes. Oh, yes I, I'm okay. Um. Uh, this was a monument erected by the Japanese army on the completion of the railroad. And as you know, it has plaques commemorating uh, uh, deaths of people in Vietnamese, Thai, Chinese, uh, and Tamil, uh, I think are the languages concerned. Um, Malay. And uh, Malay, yes. Bahasa. Well, Indonesian, Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Malaysia, Malaya, Malaysia is the same. Um, uh, and I, I would like just to mention a curious thing uh, about this monument. It is very unusual for a military anywhere in the world to erect a monument to the construction of anything that recognizes that a, an unspecified number of deaths occur. Okay. Let me put it another way. Have you ever seen a monument to any of the Indians who died building the, the railway from Bangkok to Singapore? No. No. And don't say that none died. That's not true either. Yes, Have yes. Have you yes. ever seen a monument in India put up by the British administration to people, to Indians who died creating the vast railway network in India? No. Nope. I don't know, but I will, I bet that there is no such monument. Yes. And many people, I'm sure, lost their lives. Uh, what I'm saying is it's very unusual for a military, because military people all have the same mindset, mm. to set up a monument, to say we achieved our purpose, but we're very sorry that lots of people died. Mm. So my feeling is that we have this monument in Thailand already and that it might be a good idea to try to develop on that, to try to uh, put more monuments, if you like. Uh, there's a, a, a monument that was put up quite recently by the Americans to the American prisoners of war who died on the Burma Railway. That's right by the bridge too. Hmm. That's a very small monument. I can't remember when that was put up, but it was, I, I remember it being, it was 
put up during my interest in the railway, about 1970 onwards, maybe 1980s. Mm. So I think that there is, one of our problems is this, The Death Railway has been a vast uh, generator of money for the provincial Kanchanapuri authorities. The people, the way it's marketed with absolutely no, no relation to what actually went on there <laughs> as a tourist site is just absolutely extraordinary. And anybody who's been there will know what I mean. Um, to be quite honest, Europeans and Americans represent money. Indians and Indonesians and Malayans and uh, Vietnamese and, and so on, they don't represent money. The income from such people is going to be very small. And that's the difference. I, I hate to sound cynical, but that's the big difference as far as the Thai tourist authority is concerned. How to get the Thais to agree to erecting such a monument, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I really un, un, unsure. Uh, I have some more. Uh, uh, good evening. I, we have a specialist in law from uh, uh, Malaysian University, I think. Yes, multimedia. Maran. Yeah. And uh, a question that I don't quite understand. What was the ulterior motive of British and Japanese invading Malaya? Is that the question? Yeah, I think that's the question. Um, but, well, the British, I think you know already, it was yeah. for money. Yeah. It was for, for enormous profits could be made out of, uh, and were made by the British out of Malayan tin and rubber. Uh, but the Japanese, it's rather different, of course. Um, they are trying to secure oil. Well, you may say there's no oil in, in Malaya. Of course, there isn't. But there was oil in Burma. And there was oil in Indonesia, in Borneo. And uh, that was what the Japanese needed to uh, acquire. Uh, many people ask uh, about, this leads on to another thing, many, uh, some people were asking about Indians. Uh, the, why were there so many Indians of the Malayan communities sent to the railway? I think the answer is, is fairly simple, that um, uh, when the Japanese invaded Malaya, uh, the plantation stopped working the rubber plantations. And so you had a vast number of uh, resources, sort of unemployed, distressed plantation workers. So who better than to send to the railway? The markets for rubber, of course, just disintegrated as soon as Japan occupied Malaya. Mm. After all, the amount of rubber needed by the Japanese might be rather small. So that was why they, 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 they were a suitable community. And by working through the, the plantation overseers, the Japanese could introduce the idea that perhaps it might help the ultimate liberation of India. Oh. Okay. I don't know that, uh, if that helps to <laughs> answer some of these questions or not. Definitely, definitely, uh, Doctor. Now, now we like to, uh, I'm, I mean, we have like past one and a half hours. 
Uh, oh, that be really? Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Am I talking too much? <laughs> you, are, you are doing just fine, doctor. Um, okay, we would like to open up this to, to viewers. I think you have already yes. Uh, yes. completed most of the questions that I sent to you. Uh, I think we have, yes. Yeah. Anyway, any anyone, please, um, we'd like to have a word with Dr. Bogart. You can raise your hand and uh, you can ask the question. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Maybe I bored everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, question about the improvement of uh, in, uh, allowing improvement of building a monument, quite simple, as you said, it's all about money. Okay. Um, Uh, I would agree with that question. I mean, definitely the Thais should do something. Remember, there are Thai laborers involved too. We don't hear about them. Mm. The government has somehow neglected to, uh, the Thai authorities have neglected to mention that Thais were impressed also to work on, on, the, labor, on the railway. Uh, and, and you would think that the, 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 the government would be interested in trying to make a monument for the workers, but it, it hasn't happened. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think that the problem is the writing of post-war history uh, has generally been done by uh, Westerns, Americans, English, British. Uh, it's not being done by the Asians themselves. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. Is there, is there any chance of getting classified documents in Japan? Is there any 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 documents in Japan? On, on yes, that? yes, I think there may be some. I don't know how you would get them. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, in Kyoto, where I was living, there is an index, a card index of all the prisoners of war who were ever uh, involved on the. Uh, uh, Siam, uh, the, the Burma Siam uh, uh, Railway. It's a uh, Siam Burma Railway, sorry. Uh, in one of the temples uh, to peace, I, I've forgotten what it's called, um, I've forgotten the name. It's a modern temple. And the Allied occupation authorities gave a copy of the card index. Uh, to be preserved in this in this temple. It was written by the British, the returning British and Australians. Every time a body was brought into Kanchanapuri, uh, six copies of the document uh, detailing whose remains it was, what they did, how they died and everything. Six copies of, the, uh, of every... Uh, prisoner was made. And of course, you will find among these index some Chinese and some Indians and even some Malays. But these were people who had been fighting in the British armed forces. Mm. You see the, the distinction. If there were, and you will find in the graves at Kanchanapuri, uh, operated by the Commonwealth War Graves uh, Commission, there are some Indians and there are some Chinese. But generally speaking, these are people who were uh, 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 enlisted, not in the Indian Army, in the British Army. Oh, okay. 
sorry. Uh, and, um, yes, I would agree. Uh, um, uh, with the comment from uh, uh, Mr. Wichai Saini here, uh, that, uh, of course, the risks were less for Indians um, uh, uh, who were working for the British uh, on the railways in India. Of course, that's true. Uh, it was a job that was uh, much better known. Um, this uh, question is about whether is there any documents in Australian archives? Did yes, they... I think so. Yeah, I think you will find uh, uh, in the Australian War Memorial there are documents that are uh, are available. I have not been there. So I can't really vouch for it. And there are documents that I have not yet uh, not been able to see too, uh, as I mentioned before, in the Imperial War Museum. They may not, in London, they may not be very numerous, but they, there are documents relating to Asian laborer, laborers on the death railway in, in the library of the museum. Um, in Australia, there must be much more. I'll tell you why. Um, um, uh, unless you're all wanting to go to sleep already. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the, um, the it was the Australians, I think, who came up with the figure of 270,000 labourers on the death railway. This is a gross underestimate. Um, and I think somebody needs to go to the Australian War Memorial and find out how this happened. I was trying to find the document that I received from Sam in, in Paul Krotoska's documents about the numbers of Asian deaths on the railway. And um, it was a very strange document. It kept saying things like, well, there were all these Indians and, and Malayans and, uh, and uh, Burmese uh, who died. Um, and we think it was 270,000. But, and this is important, this was repeated several times, but all the prisoners of war and all the laborers in, we interviewed claimed that it was much greater. So where did this 270,000 come from? It came from the Japanese. Mm. The Japanese said they had used 270,000 laborers. Now, my estimates are that at least 500,000 and probably up to 550,000 were used, uh, laborers were involved on the railway. 270,000 is a, what the Japanese told to the Allies. I tried to find that document. I couldn't find it. It's somewhere in that enormous file, you said. Maybe I can send to you again uh, if, if you can give me your address. Uh, I I think after the uh, after the war, the uh, Allied force, um, you know, they did their own investigation, and that's how they figured out that number came about. And it's in the in the Dr. Paul's uh, uh, collections of documents stated it's there. There somewhere. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they also interviewed the the uh, fourth the, the 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 person in charge the, the army personnel in charge for the fourth special uh, 
uh, railway unit, uh, the Japanese by the name Yamamoto. And he gave this figure. And then they also have another figure from the interrogation done uh, um, on the uh, controller of laborers in, in, in Singapore. Uh, can't remember, it's Shimozuwa, if I'm not mistaken. And he also given that, that account. So we have uh, four different accounts of from the Japanese and, and it's it's almost that, the figure is almost there, it's what, 270,000. Um, well, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the, <coughs> of course, it's lesser than this, well, 90,000, something like that, yes. Yeah, Yeah. I, 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 you, you have to remember, hmm. The Japanese did admit that the documents that they had burned was about the Asian laborers. You know, they, they, it was two weeks before the Allied forces uh, occupied, arrived in Thailand uh, mm -hmm. after the defeat of Japan. There were two weeks and they destroyed all the documentation they had in Thailand about the Asian workers and they admitted this because they they said quite clearly to the and it's in uh, dr paul's work um they said quite clearly that although the J japan had not been a signet had not ratified its signature to the un the united uh, the League of Nations Covenant on Prisoners of War. Uh, the Diet had not ratified it, but the, the government agreed to it, and they observed it. And in a sense, they did. In the sense of records, they did observe that convention. But they said, but like other Western empire, uh, other Western empires in Asia, the business of civilian labor within the Japanese Empire has nothing to do with any League of Nations covenants. Mm. And that is legally true. Right. Uh, 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 from a, a legalistic point of view, I don't know if there were any conventions on civilian labor. But I think not, because mm -hmm. the Western colonies would not want to be examined about their use of colonial labor. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, a question uh, about documents from the Malaysian government. No, I was not able to do that, but I have had some. Uh, uh, a, a Malaysian friend uh, has uh, uh, had some access and information. That's where the Pekanbaru labor, the fact of Malaysians being some Malaysians being sent to the Pekanbaru railway came from. Uh, I myself have not. I've never asked the Malaysian government. I've always assumed it would say no. I mean, after all, I am a foreigner uh, in Malaysia. Uh, I don't think that they would give information to me particularly, but I have had some, I have some friends who have had access to some information. So, um, seems this is there any, it's almost 9.48 now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, everybody. <laughs> it seems like we are gross with your, <laughs> uh, with, with, with your details you are sharing here. And uh, yes, um, Seems like we had uh, okay. All right. 
Okay, I can I can share this information uh, because I think Mr. Maran is interested to work on the documents to get documents from the war memorial in, in uh, Canberra. So yes, we can we can share you later uh, with you later on, uh, Doctor. Yes, Bob. yes. Contact details, right? So, um, but so remember, I, I have never been to Australia, hmm. and then so just I, I I'm only talking about my impression yeah I, th I think uh, just to share with you that um, uh, the australian broadcasting corporation abc has done a lot of programs uh, of um, archiving the experience of the pow's and and and, and the documents as well uh, yeah then maybe later I'll, I'll share some of the podcasts uh, which published by ABC uh, in the group uh, that we have uh, for the death railway, right? It, it's quite interesting because they also share, the POWs also share their experience uh, working with the laborers. Some of the podcasts um, uh, quite interesting, right? Um, so, If you need to, if you need to speak to Doctor Borget, you can, you can, you can raise your hand, and I can allow you to. Uh, you can direct ask directly to Doctor Borget. There you are. You see, everybody's fatigued. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. All right. So. Um uh, yes, so so somebody mentions that they have seen some uh, monuments to in, in the war in Borneo on uh, in Sydney. Okay. All right, so so um so it's nine fifty now and uh uh yeah we have uh Miss Shakti. Hi. Hi. Hi, Doctor. Hi. 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 Um, Hi. Thank you for having you with us today. It is really a wonderful Thank you for session. coming. Yeah. Uh, it is really history, never been interesting. So, anyway, since uh, it is a uh, history, everybody must know their history. So it is actually you have uh, spent most of your time getting to know, even though you said accidentally you involved in this. It was not meant for. Somehow or other you get involved and you are too much involved until too much of time spent on this. And very, very valuable uh, for sharing with all of us in the session today. In okay. fact, uh, today is the first session I'm joining this group. Okay. From the groups. Oh, right. Right. Uh, Thank you very much. Carry on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have learned uh, through history the subject from school days. I'm 52 now. School days, we have learned from the books, but someone who have experienced it and went to see the places. Uh, we have the opportunity to talk directly. It's really a great pleasure. Thank I you. hope everyone feels the same. And um, I think my husband was most interested just now to join because he says uh, his uh, father, his grandfather yeah. was the first engine driver of that. Oh, family. right. Right. So I saw. Really, yes, you mentioned that. He, he's yeah. here. Maybe, maybe he say hi to him. Hi. Hi, hi sir. You were the first driver of my, a, grand, my grandfather. Your grandfather? I don't know. Of course, not you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got some of the documents. I, I, I saw some of the documents with me now. Um, I have to search. I don't know where it's a very big huge place over there. Now I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So that would be very, very interesting yes. to hear from you, sir. Yes. Uh, I, I, may, I meant to mention that there's something that come up on the uh, uh, to everybody that we we had we had the grandson of the first driver of the yes. 
uh, uh, when um, um, it, uh, the news came from my mom, she says that uh, when my grandfather coming back from uh, 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 Siam, he bought a, a clock. It's about 120 years. The clock, uh, I, I am not sure the uh, exact date, but it's more than 100 years, the clock, the name of the clock. The clock? Oh, yeah, the clock, I still, I, the wall clock, I still have the clock. Uh, it's not running, but I'm, I, I keep it as an antique clock. Oh, I'm, I'm oh. keeping it. Amazing. Yes. Is, it, is it from Thailand? Uh, yes, it's Thailand. So, so your, your grandfather managed to come back? Yes, he managed to come back. Okay. He managed to come well, back. The, the, the railway drivers and railway staff were treated quite well. Yes. I, yes, it, it was uh, my parents, uh, my mom says that uh, they treated uh, the driver as a first class. Hmm. As a first class. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think last last week I shared this this uh, uh, information on the on the butai, uh, especially the Mayama butai, which operates the uh, the logistic part. Uh, the engine drivers were given the mosquito nets. Oh yes, I, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about it. Yes. I'm not sure about it. Okay. Right. Last week I shared that that information. But there are only four four units. Were operating the whole railway, and then one of it, engineering. Uh, the second one was the uh, logistic, where you have the uh, dr uh, drivers and, and then station masters, one who does the uh, uh, managing the railways. Then you have the bridge building and the construction. I think the bridge building is the most worst uh, treated uh, because every time when there is uh, damage on the bridge, they have to. You know, go there and then uh, you you have a lot of casualties uh, in that unit. But when it comes to the uh, engine engine uh, engine driver, the logistic units, it's more uh, the, the people. I mean, the, the workers are being taken care of. Yes. 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 The only person now surviving is my uncle. He's about 70, about 80 years old. I have to get more information from him. He's still, uh, he's still alive. My well, if, he, if he's still alive and with us, then you should do that because when yeah. he's gone, that's the end. No, 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 not, not, that, not, uh, not that uncle, another uncle. I have another uncle, my grandfather. Uh, his name is the driver. Is the name? His name is Nala Sami. He have already passed away. Yeah. Uh, but now my uh, surviving is my uncle who will give. He got some a few information on it. So my the driver, the engine engine driver name is Nala Sami. Nala I... Sami. Um, I don't know what's the second name. His name is Nala Sami. Mm. Well, thank you for joining us and. Yes. And, and giving us this information, we hope we'll get more. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, try to find, and I will get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I, I mean, I I I should mention when E. Hackney, the Korean auxiliary who passed away in March, he was ninety-three years old, and he was the last surviving of this Gunzok group, mm. I think. So we are going to lose all the information. Okay, so uh, we are coming to, uh, to uh, nearing to the end of the uh, session today. And uh, I would like to thank uh, um, Participation, participants and the, and the uh, uh, their involvement for the past seven weeks and then support for the past seven weeks, it's really inspiring. And uh, again, thanks to Dr. Bogart. And uh, final word from Dr. Bogart, what do you have, uh, you know, for those younger generation, as you say that uh, all this, those have gone through uh, the, that railway, uh, they have, we, we have 
you know, they 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 are they are perished at the moment. And uh, what would be your advice for the generation, the second generation of the victims? Mm, that's a difficult one. <laughs> I think we need to get your ancestors' stories uh, recognized. And, and so I agree with the person talking about monuments and the importance of them. It is important that somebody acknowledges uh, the suffering uh, that uh, happened. I don't think the Japanese would do it, but who knows? The, the, uh, the British might. <laughs> who knows? But it is important to get their story remembered. Right. Okay. So, um, right. So with that, uh, I think, I think uh, with that, we can, we can end this session for today. And uh, again, uh, thank you, doctor, for spending, uh, I think, almost two hours. I'm not sure whether you had your dinner before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> And I would like to thank everybody for coming. I, I mean, it's, it's really nice that everybody is interested. Uh, mm. and, and let's somehow, I'm getting old. I'm not going to be here much longer myself. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it is important that the younger people uh, carry on uh, this work. Uh, yeah. And the aim, as I say, is to get the stories of the death railway victims uh, known and acknowledged. So, uh, thank I've, you so much. Thank you, Doctor. I've also received a request from the WhatsApp group that we should arrange a trip to Kanchanapuri. Uh, maybe you as our guide uh, <laughs> after all this pandemic things over. Right? Remember that I'm as far away from Kanchanapuri as you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. Uh, 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 and I, I hope that if there are more questions, maybe we can do another session someday. Yeah, but definitely. I think you've got many more interesting people to, to talk, to come and talk first. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. All right. So we'll be, Thank you very much. We'll plan some things uh, uh, after the pandemic, right? <laughs> right on, okay. right on. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, we was thank you very much, and uh, we will end this session today. And uh, for next week, uh, we'll have uh, Doctor uh, Kurunji Vendan, uh, who has done the uh, documentation. Uh, sorry, a documentary on, on documentary film on the death railway joining us next week. So uh, please make yourself free and join us for, uh, for if you have more if you have any questions for Dr. Kurunji Vendan, please uh, you can you can message me through the uh, WhatsApp group. All right. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, can, can I just say that I I, 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 Dr. Kurinji Bendan came to uh, stay with me many years ago, uh, and that he is a very good source. And uh, uh, unfortunately, he's bound to be talking in Tamil, so I will not. There's not much point me joining, but I'm very glad he's come to. He's coming to speak. I'm sure you'll be find it interesting. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming.
லைஃப் ஆஃப் பண்ணிருங்க சாமிநாதன் ஓ எஸ் 